Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as, uh, as I said, uh, today's talk is about getting ready to use Redis uh, with Apache Spark. Uh, this is a really interesting audience for me. Uh, normally, I talk about Spark to people who know about Redis and don't know about Spark. And I'm guessing for this audience, it's uh, a lot of people who know about Spark who maybe don't know about Redis. How many of you here have heard about Redis before or use Redis? Oh, okay, so quite a few of you. How many are using Redis as a cache? How many have thought about using Redis in your machine learning pipeline? Awesome. So hopefully we have some interesting material for you today and you'll learn a little bit more about some of the capabilities of Redis and how you can use it in conjunction with Spark. Uh, so just some of the things I wanna talk about today is obviously some introductions and then kind of dive into the why of Redis and Spark, why these two technologies can work very well together. Um, for those of you who don't know Redis, I am going to spend a little time introducing Redis and explaining what it is and what it does. And then for the bulk of the talk, I'm going to talk about our uh, Redis ML module, which is an open source module for supporting uh, machine learning models in Redis. Uh, who we are. So I work for Redis Labs, and we're the home of Redis. Uh, we support the Redis open source uh, project, and we also provide an enterprise version of Redis. Um, and uh, just a little bit about the company. We were founded in 2011, and our headquarters are here in Mountain View. And then we also have an R&D center in Tel Aviv. Um, I work in the developer advocacy program. I'm actually a developer. I have about 20 years of experience building and architecting systems. A lot, I'm a big distributed systems and database nerd. Uh, and uh, here's a few of the former places I've worked at. And so why, like, why, why am I here talking to you about Redis and ML? Well, one of the things we're seeing is that there are, with uh, machine learning models, there's a lot of challenges that are starting to creep into. Uh, we're seeing models become bigger, more complex. Uh, it's difficult and challenging to deploy them into production and use them in a real-time scenario. Um, a lot of homegrown solutions don't necessarily scale well. Uh, particularly around sp serving speed, latency, and size. Um, and it's difficult to build your own reliable system. So we're looking at a way of providing you a out-of-box experience for serving up and using machine models in a real-time environment. Um, so for those of you here who don't know what Redis is, uh, Redis is a NoSQL database. Uh, it's open source. Um, you can go out to GitHub today and find all of the source for Redis. Uh, it was started around 2009 by Salvatore Sanfilippo. Uh, Redis is an in-memory database. So uh, no, none of your data is served off of disk. Everything is served out of memory. Uh, and generally, because we're serving directly out of memory, most operations are uh, completed in under a millisecond. Um, so why would you use Redis? The big thing in relating to Spark and why you might use Redis is Redis modules and the extensibility, is that you're able to represent parameterized machine learning models as basically a native Redis data type. So you can use it in your system along with a variety of other data structures that Redis provides, like sets, sorted sets, um, hyperlog log, which is a probabilistic counting uh, data structure to build very fast, very responsive applications that can use machine learning data in real time. So for those of you who are familiar with Redis, and I know there are several of you, what are Redis modules? Well, it's a new part of Redis that's coming out of the 4.0 release. And it's basically a way of integrating essentially dynamically loadable C and C++ code to basically build or add on to existing data structures, build new data structures and add new functionality without having to have your functionality incorporated into the core of the open source project. So you can build something on your own release cycle and not have to worry about the release cycle of the open source project. So when we look at Redis ML and the machine learning module, basically, as I said, what we're doing is defining data structures for machine learning models as essentially native Redis data types. You can store these data as, as hot models, and then you use Redis as your evaluation, scoring, and inference engine. 
And you can also, if you need to, easily integrate other and addition, uh, machine learning modules that are written in C++. And so you can see here a graphic that sort of represents what a, uh, what a uh, machine learning pipeline would look at, look like using Redis ML. You're not limited to necessarily Spark, but we provide a lot of good features to make it easy to use Spark with Redis ML. You could really use any training platform you wanted to use. It's just we built connectors that make it very easy to connect Spark to the Redis ML module. So Redis ML. Our module allows you to essentially represent several different model types. So uh, tree ensembles, linear regressions, uh, logistic regressions, matrix operations, and, and we're gonna build on this as we find uh, uptick in the community. Um, so let's take a look at uh, a way you might represent a model. So a random forest model should be very familiar to many people here who are doing machine learning. Um, it's basically a collection of decision trees which are uh, tree-based rules for expressing uh, things like classification and regression. Uh, you have splitter nodes that can be categorical, they can be numeric, and then you take essentially a decision over the majority of the trees. Now, this type can actually be represented directly in Redis using um, several basic commands. So now you have this way in Redis of representing this native data type, uh, representing machine learning model as a native data type. So for instance, if I wanted to add a tree to a forest and work with forests in Redis, I would use the add command to basically add a rule. Um, I would specify a forest, I would specify a tree within that forest, then a path, and then some attributes and um, a predictor. Then once I've set up my trees in Redis, I can perform a classification or a regression by passing it a feature vector and running it through my forest. So here's a little more detailed example. So I start by loading my module. It's a, it's a very basic, like you would do maybe in Apache. Um, you load it into memory. Here's an example. So if I wanted to add a rule that split on male as part of your feature vector uh, uh, using sex, gender as a um, category, I could add a rule like this. And then if I wanted to run my rule, I would use the run command, reference my forest that I've set up, and then the current feature vector that I want to score or apply my rules to. If I run, a, run it again with a different feature vector, I get a different result. So it's a command and uh, API driven interface to your machine, to basically machine learning evaluation. So that's great. We've got this native data type in Redis, but how does that relate back to Spark? Well, there's also a Spark Redis connector. And what the Spark Redis connector does is basically it allows you to take data out of Spark and then populate these rules in Redis without having to do any additional work. The connector and the model, module are both open source code and uh, it's the connector is written in Scala, the module is written in C, and it basically allows you to take the Apache Spark data, represent it in Redis, and it's an integration you don't need to build. Um, so where would you find this code? Um, the Redis ML module, um, you would actually find here. Um, the Spark module you can find here, and then there's actually an online demo. And that's actually all I had for you today. Um, so I'm done a little early, um, but are there any questions out of the audience? Awesome. Yeah. Um, are they basically the standard? 
Yeah. Um, so uh, the basically, since everything is in uh, in memory, you ha one you have to have your entire model within uh, memory, and then you have to keep the uh, model within the size of your core. If you start uh, thrashing, basically, you're uh, not in a good space. Also, then you also generally tend to need, depending on how you're dealing with certain operations around persistence, um, you may need to actually leave uh, a essentially use only half of your available memory. Um, so everything is served then, and then you can build out several very, very large forests or linear regressions. Cool. Do we have any more questions? Do you have any more questions? All right, great. Uh, well, let's thank our speaker. Thanks.